Thank you for tuning in and thank you for supporting our channel. But if you are new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please encourage us by doing so and we shall continue to bring you the latest news as they come. And together we shall walk with our great leader, Mazin Namde Kano, IPOB and Eastern Security Network to make our Biafran dream a reality. He said, Barista Ifan Yejiofo, the lead counsel to our great leader, Mazinam Dekanu, said that Southeast leaders have spent several hundreds of millions of naira to cause confusion in IPOB. You know, they are trying to help the Fulani Janjaweed. The Fulani Nigerian government wants to destroy IPOB. So they are using the Southeast leaders, the governors, the politicians, and the Fulefus. You know, but they failed. They failed woefully. They have been trying to destroy IPOB. You know, it will be recalled that members of IPOB were divided on the sit at home order by the group in Southeast. And the whole confusion was caused by the Fulani slave Southeast leaders. You know, using the compromised Nigerian news media. IPOB in a statement issued by the spokesman, Imar Powerful, when he ordered the seat at home in Southeast in a bid to force the Fulani terrorist Nigerian government to, you know, release our leader, Mazen Amdekano, from their illegal detention unconditionally. You know, after plea from stakeholders and elders in Biafra, the younger brother of our leader, Kanu, Kanu suspended the sit-at-home directive, citing the National Exam Council examination, NECO, for junior secondary school students in the region. You know, all the confusion is caused by the Fulani Nigerian government. But they cannot succeed without the Southeast leaders. They cannot succeed. And that is why they are spending so much money to stop IPOB, to cause confusion. Their mission is very simple. They want to destroy IPOB. They want to create more confusion for them. And do it under the pretense that they are part of them so that the gullible among them can fall for their tricks. That is what they want to do. And that is the assignment the Fulani Nigerian government have given the Southeast leaders. But they have failed. They have failed woefully. You know, they failed because after the suspension of the sit at home, Biafrans still went ahead to obey the sit at home order. And that got them confused. It got the full and the with confused. It got them confused. Malami. The terrorist minister of justice has been exposed. He secretly ordered government offices to hoist Islamic flag as allegiance to Taliban. But when they were exposed, they quickly did a damage control. And when they came with their damage control, they used a Biafran. 
They just say Biafra. To do their damage control. My brothers and my sisters, a flag bearing Islamic inscription and said to have been hoisted in the conference room of the Nigerian Humanitarian Agency attracted controversies following the insinuation in some quarters that Nigeria was gradually being Islamized by the Fulani Nigerian government. It's not an insinuation. It is the reality. The Fulani Nigerian government have trickishly, stylishly, deceptively Islamizing the whole of Nigeria. And that is why sometimes when they talk, they speak in Hausa, you know, and that is why the nepotic appointment and employment is going on in the federal civil service and all the parastatals because of their Islamization. They have done it. It's just that now that the Taliban has taken over Afghanistan, everyone's eyes is now open because a lot of them were seen on social media. I, I mean, a lot of Fulani Nigerian government personnel were seen on social media rejoicing, celebrating, and that was why, you know, a lot of people, their eyes saw the uh, Islamic flag that was hoisted in the conference room of a Nigerian parastatal. Imagine that. Which shows that they have Islamized the whole of Nigeria. That means if you go to all the ministries and parastatas, they have their Islamic flag all over. All over. You know, but Nema, the parastata, they did not deny hosting the flag, which have attracted public attention, which shows that it is not an insinuation. It is the reality on ground that the Fulani Janjaweed have Islamized all the federal parastatals, all the federal civil service, you know, and ministries. They have Islamized them. And that is why Nema did not deny hosting the flag. And Nema is the National Emergency Management Agency. You know, they did not deny it. But with their usual full and deceptive narrative, they said that the said flag is that of King Salman, Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center, a humanitarian aid group in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So is Saudi Arabia Nigeria? No. So why must they host the flag in the conference room? So it shows that the Fulani Janjaweed are now very bold because Taliban has taken over. So they believe that they can come out they believe they can come out. You know, the spokesman of NEMA, Mr. Manzo Ezekiel, speaking exclusively at their headquarters in Abuja, explained that the flag was hoisted on Friday when the Saudi Arabian humanitarian group visited NEMA to commission its distress call center donated by the group my brothers and my sisters, you can see the flag was hoisted to show solidarity with Taliban or Islamization of Nigeria. 
That was what was done. That was exactly what was done. That flag has something to do with the Islamic religion. But the claim is not anything to do with religion. Why didn't they hoist Israeli flag in the conference room? They won't do that. They won't do that. Thank you for watching this video and bye-bye for now.